Good morning, this is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. I am in the front yard of my Portland, Oregon food forest, zone 8B, and I got a request from a subscriber to share more about how I harvest various crops in my garden. So I'm down to do that. I think that's a great idea. Today I am working on harvesting this plant in front of me. I actually have several around the garden um, and I just happen to be working on this one right now. So I thought, let's go ahead and film it. This is a Lonicera cerulea. It is the honeyberry, also known as hascap. It is an edible honeysuckle and one of my favorite early crops. Now they're running a little bit late this year. They're usually ripe the last week of May and everything's running a little bit late right now for us here in Portland. But they're ripe now and it's time to harvest. So I thought I would talk about this plant a little bit and talk about harvesting and utilizing it. I find that for a lot of berries and actually just a lot of crops in general, annual bush beans or nuts or um, definitely blueberries and raspberries, there is the time input of planting them, amending the soil, caring for the guild that they're in. If you aren't familiar with guilds, I have a bunch of videos on them. They are the permaculture way of companion planting to support a plant. and. That's the initial input, but then there's also quite a bit of time and labor involved in harvesting. So when you think about gardening, when you think about growing your own food, don't underestimate how much time you're going to spend in the summer and the fall actually picking your produce and then even more time in preserving it or just preparing it and eating it, but definitely in preserving it. So in permaculture, we say you need to obtain a yield. and there is no such thing as a free lunch, right? Like we work to minimize labor. We work to minimize uh, the suffering and the uh, output and maximize quality of life for people in a permaculture system. But that doesn't mean that there is no labor and there is no effort involved. The reality is that you gotta prep for, you gotta pre prepare for time to harvest your produce and berries being tender and delicate and small and often somewhat fiddly are time intensive. So just be aware when you're planting your berries, think about whether you are interested in the amount of time it takes to harvest them. Let's talk about honeyberries. So I'm tucked into a plum guild here in the front yard and underneath I have planted honeyberries. Now, these are grown quite frequently, quite commonly in Eastern Europe and Japan. They've only really been grown in the United States for I would say maybe 10 years. I've had these for about eight years they are kind of just catching on, but they've been cultivated elsewhere for a long time. So just because something is new and trendy in the United States doesn't mean that it is not a traditional food elsewhere. Also, just because something looks like it's a new permaculture concept, that doesn't mean that it wasn't used by other cultures extensively for a long time. Permaculture borrows from um, really successful cultivation and uh, people care techniques from other periods of time and other cultures. And we definitely wanna be aware that all of these ideas are not brand new to permaculture. The same way, just because this crop is trendy right now, it doesn't mean that it is new to human cultivation. The Hascap produces typically about a month before my blueberries do. And that's one of the main reasons that I grow it. It blooms very early, is great honeybee food. Bumblebees like it too. And actually I've seen um, hummingbirds visiting it as well because it blooms so early and then it produces a crop typically in late May. And where I am in late May, if the weather is cooperative, you might be just getting strawberries. You'll have rhubarb, but there aren't a lot of berry crops ripe yet. Y'all gonna have to bear with me. We're right up by the street. So I know I say it a lot, but like I, I live in Portland. I don't live in a rural area. So there's always car noise, especially when I'm filming in the front yard. So honeyberries, 
produce these blueberries and folks say, well, this is, this is like a blueberry, it's a blueberry substitute, but ready a month earlier. And I would just caution you, they are very tart. When you cook them, they transform. My kid's favorite jam or jelly after black currant is I make a honeyberry lime jam. It is beautiful and delicious. On a winter's day, it's just a mouthful. You put it on your English muffin or your scone and it's just a mouthful of spring sunshine. It's so good. So this is definitely a crop. Maybe you'll like it raw. Maybe you like to eat raw cranberries. I don't know. Maybe you really love that tart food, but it's really good for cooking. Goes very well when cooked with pork or poultry dishes as well. So the berries are small, they look like a blueberry, but don't be deceived, they have more flavor and more acidity. So how do we pick them when they're ripe in typically late May, but this year, early June? So the berries are produced on the underside of the branches, and this is a benefit, I feel like, because they are less likely to get pecked by birds. Now, I do find that jays and a few other birds will peck them, so you may have some berries, particularly at the top of the bush, that have a little bit of bird damage, but they produce so prolifically. And most of the berries hanging underneath means that there's very little bird damage compared to some of the other berry crops. So they grow on the under underside, and that means they're like a little fiddly to pick. You have to go underneath, but they come off very easily into your hand. Let's see if you can see here. So here are these honey berries right here, and you basically just brush them with your hand and they come off into your hand super easy. Very, very easy. Now they are delicate. They do bruise easily like a blueberry. They are, here, let me grab one. They are like a blueberry, actually really kind of a purpley black fruit with a white bloom on them. And um, it comes off if you handle them quite a bit, but that's okay, just like a blueberry. The bloom helps protect the fruit and um, it does definitely come off with handling and, and don't worry if that happens. Inside there are seeds, they're small like blueberry seeds and you can eat the fruit whole. There was a study in 2009 that looked at Hascaps compared to some other kind of cold hardy, permaculture trendy plants like cornelian cherry and sloes and um, uh, hawthorn berries, and there's some others. And honey berries by far had the highest content of anthocyanins. Super good for you. And again, they're rich in vitamin C, some calcium, and they also contain almost 30% of your daily amount of fiber in one serving. So definitely a, a multiple reasons why this is a berry worth growing. Now, there's two ways you can harvest it. Like I showed, you can just reach underneath and kind of brush your hand along. And if they're ripe, they come off easily. Now, if you have to tug, much like a raspberry, if you have to tug at the berries to get them off, they're not ripe. You should barely bump them with your hand and they'll fall off if they're ripe. The second way is to lay down a sheet and shake the bush and ripe berries will fall. This is the way I harvest mulberries as well. I found it can be difficult to employ this method in a permaculture system and that's because I have only one quarter acre. I have densely, densely planted my guilds. So there's the plum tree up here way up here, directly under it is the hascap, directly under that are my understory support plants, like I have daylilies down here, and then some herbs on the other side. And that means that it is tough to get a sheet under here and shake it. But if you have space, that is an option for picking them. All right, so I'm going to attempt to keep picking my hascaps while I talk to you all. So, hascap needs a specific set of growing conditions to do well. It is native to parts of Asia and far Eastern Europe, and it does very well in a very cold winter. I have found that you can grow this. Actually, it's been uh, becoming more of a prevalent commercial crop in Canada because it does very well with a cold winter. The things I have found that bother it are it can get sunburn if it's really intensely sunny where you are, and it also can be prone to windburn. 
So I had some in my front yard a little bit farther forward and um, what I found was that the east winds whip in from the Columbia Gorge this way and the ones that were not sheltered by my neighbor's heads, hedge sufficiently got windburn in the winter. And so I moved them to a little bit more sheltered location. So it is really cold hardy, but it may need a windbreak or some shelter from the wind if it's particularly bitterly windy where you are in the winter. A lot of plants are really susceptible to wind. Wind is very drying to a plant. So it does well in pretty much a, a, any soil you can give it. And it does like it a little bit acidic. Now I have found that it doesn't require pruning, but it sends up loads and loads of shoots from the middle of the plant, far more than a blueberry does. And it can be difficult to reach in and harvest the fruit if you don't make an attempt to kind of thin out the oldest wood. Now the wood is somewhat brittle, so be careful because it snaps easily when you're in here working with it. But I do prune mine a little bit to remove any crossed or um, broken branches and just to create a little bit more air circulation in the middle. I have found that no pests and diseases bother this plant at all. And not aphids don't bother it at all. There's a plum tree directly above me that tends to have problems with aphids. They don't bother this plant. And it doesn't get slug damage either. So again, because the berries hang off the bottom of the branch, very little problem of birds eating it. Just a few get a little, a little peck here and there. So when purchasing your hascaps, they are not self-fertile. You will need two of two different varieties in order to get fruit. Just like a blueberry, you will need two different ones in somewhat close proximity. They're both in your front yard, that's fine both in your backyard, that's fine. Bees will manage to cross-pollinate them for you. Um, I found this plant is heavily visited by honeybees early in the year because it flowers so early. And if you get two different varieties, you wanna make sure they're from the same flowering group. So you don't wanna get an early and a late, or you won't have flowers at the same time and you won't have any fruit. So look for the size you want and the flowering group that you need in order to fit into your garden and get a yield of fruit. So as I said earlier, I really love this plant for making a honeyberry lime jam that my kids love, I love. That wonderful burst of spring flavor, that tartness that um, you know you're getting a nice dose of vitamin C. In fact, I think it's close to 30% of your daily amount of vitamin C in one serving of these. and. Also, they work really well for a fruit leather. So if you puree them with a little bit of sugar or honey or maple syrup and you dehydrate them, they make a really good fruit leather. Also really good if you mix them 50% with applesauce to make a fruit leather. I've found that um, we freeze them and use them a lot in the winter. I make a syrup with them that's very good on pancakes and waffles or over pound cake. So definitely a crop that you can find multiple uses for. And again, I feel like this is such a good berry for having an early harvest a month before any other berry is ready. So I would not be growing this if I was just expecting an early blueberry. If I was looking for a plant that, let me reach up here and get these real quick. If I was just looking for a blueberry one month earlier, Hascap does not taste like blueberry. It is blue, it is about the size of a blueberry, but it is not a blueberry. So I found that in permaculture, um, we often try and grow more unusual uh, and diverse food crops. And it's really good if we can set aside our expectations of flavor and give ourselves the opportunity to broaden our palate. The Western diet really is very narrow. Now, okay, I recently read this great book called Hippie Food. The Western diet is much more broad now than it was 40, 50 years ago. We eat a lot more food, a lot greater diversity of food, especially whole foods than we did in the 1950s and 60s. But at the same time, we really eat a very narrow band of edible crops and a very narrow range of flavors. And we also eat a lot of uh, animal products and crops that are produced in a way that minimizes their natural flavor. 
So we're not used to strong flavors. I wouldn't call a honeyberry an overwhelmingly strong flavor, but I would say it is not a blueberry and it does not taste like a blueberry. I find the flavor more complex and again, more tart. So just if you're trying new permaculture food crops, think about opening yourself up to experiencing new flavors and give yourself time to get used to a new flavor and decide how you feel about it and try in your mind not to immediately assume it's going to taste like a plant that you know, a crop that you know. Any of you who have grown green beans will know that there is the problem of you pick through your green bean patch and you think, I got all of them, I'm totally done. And then you give it one more glance and you realize you've missed a whole bunch. Hascap is no different than that because the berries hang on the underside of the branches. I find it useful to lift up the branches to see what I've missed because I always miss some and I always can go back through and do a second picking. In fact, a strategy that works well for me, which I can't do at the moment because my kid is at the Portland Japanese garden again with her friend, is that I pick through the berries and then I let her pick through the bush after me. And between the two of us, we end up getting most of the harvest. The good news is these will hang on the plant ripe for a couple of weeks before they start drying out. If they get a little shriveledy, that's okay. You can still pick them and use them in things like fruit leather, um, but they do hang on for quite a while. So this is about five minutes of berry picking. It really goes pretty fast, but I expect it would probably take me about half an hour to pick the whole plant. There is definitely enough for a batch of jam and a batch of syrup and enough to put on our granola and in our yogurt. I forgot to add that I think honeyberries are a great addition to smoothies or on yogurt. They bring that nice tartness that melds really well with any kind of dairy product. So, so thanks for sitting with me while I pick my hascaps. I hope you learned a little bit about growing this plant. A great choice for a permaculture garden or any garden. A great opportunity to diversify your food supply and to get a succession, a sequence of ripe fruit in your garden all the way through. Let's push the berry season a month earlier by growing hascaps and enjoy fresh, tart, vitamin C and fiber rich berries in May. And again, this year because mother nature is a little bit slow in early June, which I'm really thankful for because none of my blueberries are even remotely close to being ready yet, but I will be making Hascap syrup for us to have on our waffles this weekend. So if you enjoyed this video and got something out of it, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to my channel. You can also check out my Patreon in the description. I'm kind of floored that anybody wants to be a patron of my channel and I'm so grateful that um, I've been getting more and more patrons literally every week and it means a lot to me and it helps me be able to make more permaculture videos for you. So thank you so much. I really, really appreciate all of my new patrons and all of my old ones that have been supporting my channel for a long time. So thank you so much much.